Hey friends, what's going on? My name is Gabby and if you're new here, this is a place for you to come if you're a wedding pro. I'm actually a destination wedding planner, but I also teach Pinterest marketing for wedding pros. And sometimes I go off track and I talk about other things like SEO and I just, I'm passionate, I guess, about online marketing. I think it's really fascinating and specifically Pinterest to me is mind blowing because a lot of people are still not on the platform. So you can go back into my archives of videos where we do start talking and I'm gonna try to break this Pinterest content into smaller pieces so that you guys don't get overwhelmed. Um, but today I'm talking to you specifically about story pins. So I mentioned it in my uh, video a couple weeks ago and I mentioned it as a really amazing tool that Pinterest just launched. It's basically like Instagram stories where you swipe through multiple images on Pinterest. Now, full disclosure, not everybody has access to it yet. So I am going to show you on my profile since I did get early access I never get early access to anything, by the way, like especially on Instagram, no one ever wants to give me anything. So I'm very proud to have early access to Pinterest stories. Um, so I'm going to show you my computer and how my latest story pins uh, have gone. And the idea, if you didn't watch my last video, the idea and the reason why Pinterest released this is that they want us, the users, to be creators on the platform. So in the past, Pinterest has always been a place for us business owners to upload images and to immediately link it to our website. So what was happening, and it was amazing for us, but what was happening is that pinners, so our ideal clients, let's say, would come to Pinterest see our beautiful photo and immediately click off the platform and go onto our website, which is what we want. But Pinterest is like, guys, we're not making any money off of you because no one's seeing our ads on the platform. So I totally get it. We can't be mad at them. They're a for-profit business. They've got to make money. So they've created uh, story pins as a way to keep people creating content and to be able to share it more. Oh, hi, Fiona to be able to share it more and stay on the platform. And so at the end of your story, which I will show you, you are actually, our Pinterest automatically prompts the viewer to go to your profile. So your Pinterest profile. Now, if you guys don't know how to properly optimize your Pinterest profile in order to be searchable for your ideal clients and to have a clear message on who you are, what you offer and who you, are really designed for who your ideal client is, I have a freebie that I'm gonna link down below that is um, a helpful tool to help you find, figure out and just optimize your ideal, uh, sorry, your Pinterest profile for your ideal client. So be sure to kind of pause this video for a second while you have it paused, give it a thumbs up and go get that freebie. Um, okay, so let's take a look. Um, basically, oh, so what I was going to say, sorry, my mind's all over the place, but what I was going to say is so Pinterest triggers um, the user to go to your profile and they want people to follow you, the business owner, and therefore start to see more and more and more of your content. Now remember, some of your older content and continuously your regular pins that you're putting out there will still allow you to link to your website. So that's the idea. It's not all about keeping people on the platform. It is still, uh, Pinterest is still allowing people to jump off and go to their website. So it's just a fine balance of using both story pins and regular pins to get people to interact with you. All right, without further ado, let's take a look on how to set up and create good story pins. Okay, here we go. First thing I'm gonna do is pull up one of my galleries. We have uh, this one that's from a couple years ago, but I really like how fun and colorful it is. And I'm going to go through and pick vertical images. And as you can see, there's a lot of horizontals. So I'm gonna just select a handful. Um, it's not to say you can't use horizontals. In fact, I'm going to end up keeping some horizontals in here, but as you know, Pinterest does better with verticals. You'll see actually when we get to um, the actual story pin uh, 
portion of this, you'll see that you can kind of customize if you do have a horizontal, you can kind of uh, add more text on the bottom or crop it in a way that it kind of looks vertical. So I'll show you that next. Um, but also how cute are their dogs? I love them. They're my friends actually from um, the Border Collie world that I'm in. We do a lot of dog sports. If you know anything about Border Collies, they are very um, high energy and need jobs all the time. So I'm constantly signing up for groups like uh, fly ball and agility and stuff like that. And that's where I met this bride, Tiffany. Um, so their wedding was in Palm Springs. Super fun. Love the colors. Bougainvillea. Um, lots of cacti in the back. So I'm going to just save a couple more here and then I'll show you what we do next. Okay, hopping back over to Pinterest here. I slowed this video down because I realized it was going uh, very fast. Um, I'm over here under, and I, you guys know I'm on my desktop here. So I'm gonna go and click on that create on the top left. And you can see it says create story pen, which I have early access to. So remember, you might not have this yet, but it's good for you to know what to do um, so that you're ready when you do get it. So first it's gonna ask me to add my images. I only saved, I think I saved like seven or eight images. So I'm gonna drag and drop those in here and it'll start uploading to the Pinterest platform. It's pretty cool that you can do up to 20 images and look, it even says you can do videos. So for any of you DIY crafters out there or if you're a wedding business that um, does show a lot of behind the scenes video and stuff like that. This is a really great place to kind of showcase that. Okay, so I drag and drop one image, but I'm actually going to add a uh, bulk of the other ones because one at a time can take a little bit longer. So let's drop these in here and here they come. So you can see on the left, they become pages and they all come in as vertical images, except if you can tell on the right hand side, you get a layout option. Now I've only noticed this on the desktop or laptop version. I haven't been able to do that on mobile. So you guys tell me if you're able to do it. I have an Android, so sometimes that's different. So I'm going to just drag and drop these around. Um, because I want to create a story. So that's the idea too, is you want to start with probably your first image being something that's pretty, uh, you know, that'll capture people's attention. But after that, you do want to create a little bit of a story of the day. Now I actually hadn't uh, saved any of the reception photos when I uploaded this gallery on my drive. So I'm just going to make this into just a mini kind of ceremony and romantic uh, for the example. So let me, I think mariachi should be at the very end as the big, the big party moment. Um, okay, so here we start with a title and I love using, um, there's actually have a lot of great fonts. I personally really like the super glue one or the sourdough is my personal favorite. So it's very similar to Instagram in the sense that you can um, also make them, um, what would that be like? have a backdrop to it so you can either have just the font or you could have it uh, have a bit of a backdrop if you need it to pop. You can also move the title um, around, you can also change the color on it, change the font size. Now I haven't been able to change the font size on mobile but I was able to, I guess technically it is changing the font size, I was able to squeeze my fingers together you know to make the to make it a little bit smaller but um, it, it sometimes it gets a little tricky on mobile so you'll have to let me know what you think So 
here's an example of the page where I'm going to keep the horizontal image horizontal and add some text underneath. So I can play with that layout a little bit, which is great. So I, whenever I can, I know they're not clickable links, but I try to uh, add in the vendor's names at least, um, you know, just to have it there and make sure that people do know who's part of this wedding. By the way, I changed, I was going to put coordination by Cause We Can Events and then I decided to put planning. I just always find that planning sounds better than coordination, but I don't know. Do you guys do both? Just coordination? Depends what you've been hired for that day. So you can see I'm also leaving some of these images without any text at all. Um, I just thought that, you know, someone wants to truly see this wedding, they may not want to see some text on it at all. So I think that's totally okay for you guys to do. There's no reason to have text on every single one. All right, next we're gonna pick our theme. And now here it is not a recipe, it's not a DIY, so it's a blank list to me. And what I usually do here is I reiterate who the vendors are and maybe plug in a couple keywords if you know what your long tail keywords are. Here I'm gonna play on the idea of Palm Springs wedding. So I'm just going to, um, again, say who the photographer was, planner, venue, and full disclosure, at the time, uh, I know the florist doesn't have you know, an Instagram or is really on social media and I couldn't remember who the, what the name was because I think it's also part of maybe like a food store. So um, I went back after and added the, the, uh, the florist name, but at the time I was like, I really can't remember. So, okay, we'll press next here. And then it automatically picks that title for you on that front page if you added text. So I'm just gonna leave that as is, and then I'm going to uh, search for my colorful wedding because I know I have a board, there it is. And then here is where I always just have to play around because um, they're going, you're gonna start typing some stuff in and sometimes the keyword isn't gonna pop up. So you'll see here I go back and forth on a couple keywords. You've just gotta kinda sit with it for a minute and see, hmm, what is something that I know is gonna be searched? So maybe here's summer wedding. Um, you could look at the color palette, you could try, you know, I just did Bougainvillea, which I know is highly searched, um, and Desert Wedding wasn't popping up, so I was like, okay, well, moving on, and I think I'm just going to keep it at these three, uh, just for the sake of posting this, but I might go back and think about it a little bit longer. Okay, here it is, and this is obviously on the desktop version. You can see it, and it's really like an Instagram story where we kind of swipe through all of the images. So let's take a look um, also at our analytics. Now beware, the numbers you're going to see here are actually not correct because I just posted this a few seconds ago and there's 11,000 impressions. I don't think that's true. So you can click on um, more stats and see, you know, I really focus on the close-ups and more importantly, the saves. Now it's funny here, there are no saves, but I'm going to show you in a second that uh, my notifications popped up that we did get two reactions. So it could be these right here where you can show uh, people how you feel about a post. Um, I actually really like these. It's an easy way to react to something without having to comment. Um, so let's just take a look. I'll show you the, if I can find notification. Oh yeah, here it is. Notification, that is from the, our new Palm Springs pin. So just be careful with analytics. They're not always correct. All right guys, I hope that was helpful um, and I hope you learned how to create a story pin. Now remember, not everybody has access to this and I hope you are still able to uh, see how it would be beneficial and also maybe just start by, if you're brand new, start by focusing on creating really good pins to begin with. I always say five to 10 per day if you can, schedule them out. Um, using Tailwind. I'll link that below. Also, it's just an app. You can use the free version. It's an app that I absolutely swear by. Um, and if you really want to do a deep dive into this, 
I have an e-course um, that's all about Pinterest for wedding pros. It is literally geared to you guys in terms of what the keywords are. I have a lot of free um, descriptions that you can use, board names that you can use in there, and I talk about the, the keywords, the research of them, figuring out who your ideal client is, and then we go into the analytics and best practices for Pinterest. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, I will link that below as well. Until then, I will catch you next week. Bye.